Good afternoon po, Mr. Chair, and to all our honorable senators. Um, first and foremost po, uh, this will be my first revelation of my face and my identity. I am Kaamihan. I am the former Guerrilla Front Secretary of Guerrilla Front 20 under the Sub-Regional Committee 1 of the Southern Mindanao Region. So, sa kanayunan po, kilala po akong Amihan, uh, Che, din, Che din po yung isa kong koda, and this will be my first time to take off my mask in public. So, ako po si Joy James Sagino. Uh, Na-recruit po ako bilang member ng League of Filipino Students sa UP, uh, sa Iloilo City Campus, way back in 2007. Ang um, issue that time, Mr. Chair, was uh, 2007 was the first year of implementation of the tuition fee increase in UP and the revitalized uh, socialized tuition fee and assistance program or the SPFAP. So dahil po sa issue na yun, uh, syempre sa part ko din na galing sa mahirap na pamilya, eh sumuporta dun sa panawagan ng LFS at saka ng ibang progressive organizations na tutulan yung pagtaas ng matrikula sa University of the Philippines. Uh, after three months po of being a member of LFS, eh naimbitahan ako sa isang sikretong pagpupulong it was held sa likod ng auditorium ng UP Visaya sa Iloilo City. And yun na pala yung orientation at saka recruitment sa akin para maging member ng Kabataang Makabayan. I still remember the person who recruited me. It is the very person who personally attacked um, Mr. Jeffrey Salis. Uh, the person who recruited me sa uh, Kabataang Makabayan is Leon Porquilla, uh, the son of the late uh, Jory Porquilla. Uh, a leader then ng, ng mass movement sa isla ng Panay. So when I was recruited po sa KM a year after, um, I've been active as the city spokesperson of the League of Filipino Students, chairperson din po ng LFS sa UP Iloilo City. Tumakbo rin bilang um, of officer ng student council sa college management sa UP Visaya CM sa city campus and naging kabahagi rin ng National Union of Students of the Philippines kung saan yung pinanggalingang organization ni Congressman uh, Sara Ilago. After a year, Mr. Chair, um, naprograma akong pumasok sa isang uh, guerrilla front ng NPA sa Southern Front na kumikilo sa mga bayan ng Igbaras, and, um, Miyagaw, um, San Joaquin, somewhere in the Southern Mountain Range of Panay Island. I stayed there for three months. And then paglabas ko, uh, yun na yung naging program sa akin. I was um, invited to become a candidate member of the Communist Party of the Philippines. I was given an orientation. I was also given yung tinatawag kanina ni Mr. Jeffrey Salis na basic party course. Uh, included uh, some Marxist, Leninist, and Maoist uh, inputs on the revolution of Europe, Russia, and China, etc. And that in 2010, uh, as a cadre of the Communist Party unit sa youth and students uh, sector sa Iloilo uh, para po sa tugunan yung pangangailangan for the electoral campaign as a Communist Party cadre I was assigned as the spokesperson of Anakpawis Party List and particularly deployed to the province of Antique to become the electoral coordinator of Anakpawis and Nakabayan Coalition dun sa, sa Antique para po um, mangampanya at saka mamanage yung mga watchers ng makabayan doon sa probinsya ng uh, Antique. And then after the election, I was deployed to the regional party group. Yung sinasabi kanina ni, ni Ka Eric, ni La Canuel, na party group. Uh, ako po na deploy sa isang regional party group directly under the regional YS Bureau of the Re Regional Urban Party Committee ng Iloilo para mamuno sa anak bayan. And thereafter, I was assigned and elected as the regional spokesperson and the regional um, chairman of Anakbayan for the entire Panay Island that was in 2009 until some time in the mid of 2010. And then I became a controversial uh, personality uh, during the um, city council session of the Iloilo City when I was arrested. Um, when we were having a protest, silent protest, inside the session hall of Iloilo City, that was, I believe, October of 2010, dahil rin sa takot na naging sentro ng atensyon ng buong syadad ng Iloilo, I decided and asked sa mga 
higher organ namin sa organization na maglayliw ako. So instead of uh, at maglayliw at umuwi muna sa amin sa Zamboanga or kung saan po yung probinsya namin, instead of laylawing, um I was offered to be redeployed kasi nangangailangan din yung buong rehiyon ng Zamboanga ng isang kadre para pamunuan yung recovery ng WMRPC, the Western Mindanao Regional Party Committee, particular sa siyudad ng Sambuanga at sa ilang bahagi ng Sambuanga Sibugay. So in the, uh, December of 2010 until um, 2011, I was the Anakbayan Regional Coordinator of the entire Sambuanga Peninsula. I, I was able to attend the National Assembly and National Council meeting of Anakbayan sometimes in May 2011 and I was elected as the national vice chairperson for the entire Mindanao of the Anakbaya National Executive Council. And after that, Mr. Chair, uh, December, I was invited na dumalo sa isang intermediate party course, isang pag-aaral ng partido sa isang, uh, in the hinterlands of Davao region, uh, particularly Sitio Cogonon, uh, Barangay Salvacion, Trento, Agusan del Sur, uh, after ng pag-aaral, um, I decided to become a full-time NPA thereafter. And hindi rin matagal yung promotion at saka yung pagtaas ng aking posisyon, I became a party, uh, political guide ng isang squad ng NPA, kalaunan naging political instructor, naging political officer, and in 2016, I became the front secretary of the Guerrilla Front 20, at the same time, a deputy secretary of the sub-regional committee uh, under the SMRC. So nung nasa NPA po kami, um, hindi pa rin hiwala yung mga gawain namin. Um, we have a sub-regional urban committee kung saan sila yung nagiging legal uh, organizers namin for the peasant. So yung mukha nila ay mga KMP organizers. We also have a committee for YS. So we have Anakbayan, particularly Anakbayan, Compostela Valley. And during election, kami talaga sa guerrilla front yung uh, nagpapatawag ng mga Susing mga personality sa loob mismo ng Guerrilla Front sa kampo ng NPA para pag-usapan ano yung magiging role ng mga Guerrilla Front ng NPA sa panahon ng eleksyon. And there was indeed a time in 2016, nung tumatakbo si President Duterte, uh, hindi naman uh, ikakailan ng lahat na the entire revolutionary movement were supporting the President uh, Duterte in his uh, candidacy for the President. And NPA mismo po, kami mismo yung pumupunta sa mga barrio sa mga guerrilla base namin para ikampanya si President Duterte, ikampanya yung Bayan Muna, ikampanya yung Anak Pawis, and kapataan party list, party list, uh, etc. So, yung sinasabi nilang red tagging, ako minsan natatawa na lang po, uh, Mr. Chair, kasi uh, para sa akin po, hindi po siya red tagging. Kasi ako po, um, as my first time revealing my my true identity sa, sa public, especially here in the Senate inquiry ng ating Senate of the Philippines, uh, I really, really testify um, na there is no such thing as red tagging. Um, kami sa Anak Bayan, uh, the regional party group na namumuno sa Anak Bayan, a regional party group is a party group being, uh, of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Kami talaga yung uh, namumuno at saka nangihikayat ng mga estudyante. May program yan, uh, first, immersion sa mga peasant communities, immersion sa mga urban poor and worker communities, until the time na makakapag-decide yung mga members namin na sumampa sa New People's Army. Gaya ko na na-program din at saka dumating sa point na nag-decide ako before na sumampa sa New People's Army. And... These party list uh, groups na tumatakbo sa under the Makabayan Coalition ay mga party list groups talaga na we are leading. Even the regional party committees ng SMRC and all other regional party committees all over the Philippines down to its NPA units have very crucial role in campaigning, in implementing solid votes, solid um Command votes. Command votes, ibig sabihin, all members of the underground mass organizations, members of PKM, members of Makibaka, members of Gabataang Makabayan na nasa loob ng guerrilla base, they are manda it's mandatory for them to vote for these uh, party list organizations na tumatakbo sa uh, Congress, Mr. Chair. Paano ka nagbalik loob? Anong nagbunsod sa iyo para magbalik loob sa gobyerno? 
Um, umalis po ako sa pagka-NPA, Mr. Chair, in 2017. Uh, some, so I, if I remember it correctly, it was September 2017. Um, it was a complicated situation kasi before that, uh, yun yung simula ng pagde-declare ng martial law sa, Min, uh, sa Mindanao. Um, dahil sa uh, kahirapan, na, na, nagkakaroon ng kahirapan sa loob ng NPA unit, wala kaming gawain. So I, uh, I witnessed a lot of, of things na na opposed doon sa personal ko na prinsipyo. For example, yung nagkakwento ni Kashin about uh, violence against women, rape against women, eh, isa rin ako sa naging sakse doon sa exploitation, sexual opportunism ng aming mga commanders uh, sa loob ng aking guerrilla front mismo na may mga commanders, platoon leaders taking advantage of this new women recruits, mga kabataang babae na lumad na nare-recruit namin na one, two, or three months pa lang, kahit may mga asawa sila, ay they really are pick face na na um, ligawan, o iba naman talagang ginagapang. So yung mga bagay na hindi ko talaga makain, na nare-realize ko na we are, we, we have that stress, stress ocho na tinatawag. Isa dyan, yeah, stress ocho, Mr. Chair, yun yung um, policy of discipline ng NPA na nagsasabi isa doon, uh, wag pagsamantalahan yung kababaihan, but ang nangyayari talaga sa loob ng kilusan, yung, yung policy na yan is just a paper policy. What really ha is happening inside the movement, these commanders, these platoon leaders, these NPA uh, cadres are sexual, uh, most of them are sexual opportunities. They take advantage of this new recruits ng mga babae na kahit may mga asawa sila, ay pinagsasamantalahan yung mga kababaihan. There were, uh, I believe that was in May 2017 to June, na imbes na pag-usapan sa loob ng, ng, ng committee namin, ay papano harapin ng NPA, unit namin, yung martial law ng pamahalaan, ay yung parating na pag-uusapan namin sa araw-araw na meeting namin, ay mga violation, mga violation, mga paglabag dun sa palisiyan ng NPA na pagsasamantalan sa kababaihan. And it is being tolerated na imbes na uh, sa, uh, bigyan ng ng karampatang disciplinary action hindi ang nangyayari redeployment to other places or demotion which i believe para sa akin it's not enough eh pag ganun eh na so isa yun sa mga nag nag ano sa akin na nagtulak sa akin na lumabas and second um i actually don't want to share this in public kasi may ibang mga uh, AFP officers natin probably might get offended um kasi I was included, uh, I, I was able to join an NPA ambush sometimes in 2016, I believe that was July, against forces of the 25th Infantry Battalion sa bukiri ng um, kilometer 56, Barangay Rizal, Mungkayo, Davao de Oro, na may isang tropa talaga na sundalo na patay na. Nilaslasan pa rin talaga ng liig. So, sa, sa part ko, uh, syempre, tingin ko napaka hindi makatao eh. Na, I, I believe this so, is... Kami yan. Nandun ka mismo? Sa yes, po. Na yun. Hmm. yes po, I was there. I was I was a political officer of, of that unit who ambushed those twenty fifth IB troops operating. And um we we were we decided as as cadre now we should withdraw. However, my my isang ano, my isang platoon leader, I, I believe he was a platoon leader or a political instructor, sa isang platoon namin, na in this mag withdraw na kami, talagang nilaslasan pa yung leg yung putay ng tropa. So <laughs> Napaka napaka inhumane. Ako ako I I, I understand uh, some some issues of the Communist Party and the NPA are legitimate. For example, landlessness, poverty. These are legitimate issues. But having this dead human being killed twice, in hindi 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 ganito yung gusto kong ano eh hindi hindi hindi, hindi to yung gusto gusto kong advocacy. Hindi ganito yung hindi hindi, hindi to yung prinsipyo ko. So. Yung nangyari, I, I, when we had a meeting, Mr. Chair, sa loob ng sub-regional committee, equivalent po to ng isang provincial committee ng partido, um, pinag-usapan talaga. And I, syempre sa loob ng party, may death penalty. I really asserted for death penalty against that political instructor na naglaslas ng liig ng isang tropang patay na. However, some of our cadres sa loob ng SRC decided for a demotion instead of a death penalty. And I was very insulted kasi... Malaking, ano eh, malaking violation yan, hindi lang sa batas ng NPA, even sa Geneva Conventions, IHL, etc. Tayo, uh, NPA is claiming to be compliant to, to this international humanitarian law, to this Geneva Convention. However, 
yung ka, kami din pala sa lagay kan, kami din pala yung parang nagka-cover up dun sa mga violations. So napagtanto ko Mr. Chair na this are all deceptions na yung mga sinasabi namin sa propaganda, sa social media, sa sa, sa media, etc. Ano lang to, ano lang pala to pagpapanggap na yung NPA ay mga hukbo ng mga mga mahihirap, yung NPA hukbo ng magsasaka. Pero hindi, ito ay isang ano lang um Huk, uh, NPA na walang prinsipyo NPA na nangahasik lang talaga ng legim for the sake of of overthrowing the government and that's a thing I can't accept bilang ako I entered initially the organization as an LFS member believing that this is an organization that advocates for social change an organization that advocates for uh, for government empowerment etc pero hindi eh um Kahit na sa mga rally sinasabi ng ano sinasabi na um, namin na yung mga pulis lang yung nag, 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 nag initiate para magkaroon ng mga riot etc pero hindi I, I was able to join Mr. Chair uh, a rally uh, in US Embassy I believe sometimes in 2011 kami talaga yung nagdadala ng mga pu- ng mga cellophane mga plastic nakabalot na mga tae nakabalot na mga panis na mga pintura at kami talaga yung na-observe ko talaga na sa hanay namin na anak bayan at LFS kami yung nag initiate para mag-create ng riot sa mga previous protest and that's a thing na tingin ko naman na hindi naman necessary dapat na ganun dumating sa kasi may nakulong na mga kasama may mga nasaktan na sugatan iba mga nasagasaan at it's ano na parang labas na siya dun sa ano yung gusto kong mangyari that's, ito yung dahilan ni Sir Chair bakit ako nag-decide na umalis sa Kalusan ba't ako nag-decide na sumuporta sa government kasi I realized, Mr. Chair, na hindi pala, hindi naman dapat dahas yung paraan para makamit ng mga mamamayan na mga mahihirap kung ano yung mga advocacies, ano yung mga demands ng, ng mamamayan. Kundi, um, the government is always there to listen. I, I was able to observe that when uh, after I left the organization. Nakita ko yung ano, nakita ko yung sincerity ng government to reach out to people who are vulnerable to exploitation and infiltration ng, ng 